So now that you have learned about trees' data structure and what they are, we are going to discuss a special type of trees called binary trees. A binary tree is a tree where uh, each time a branching happens, there are at most two branches. There can be either one, two, or no branches at all. So the tree that you can see here in the picture is a binary tree because here there is a point of branching and here we have another of point of branching and we have two branches left and right, two branches left and right, two branches, again two branches and so on up until here where we have no branches at all, zero branches. So uh, the tree you can see here in the picture shows what we call a full binary tree which I will explain more about in a minute but there can be also one branch not always two, two, two branches. Now you know in computer science that uh, we always imagine and draw trees being flipped upside down. The root is actually in the sky and the uh, branches and the leaves go down towards earth. So if you have a collection of nodes arranged in a binary tree, you will see that each node may have one or two nodes as children. So node H here has two children, left and right uh, child, and here left and right child, left child, right child, and so on. Uh, node L here has only one left child, and nodes M, N, O, P, and Q have zero children. Of course, uh, a binary tree can appear in different structures, like the ones you see here on the screen. The exact structure is determined by the order and the way of how we insert nodes while building the tree, or how we delete and update an existing tree. For example, if we come to the tree in the middle here, and um, we try to delete a node like Q, just delete, and then maybe L, insert node Y as being a child or left child of, um, of N here. So what we have is something similar to the structure of the uh, tree on the right. Uh, tree on the left here, a uh, full tree because every node has a exactly two child nodes and all the leaves are at the same last level. So the level of the uh, leaves is just one. You cannot find a leaf in a uh, previous level. So uh, the second example, the second tree here, we call it a complete tree. It's like a full tree but only in the last level the tree has some nodes missing which are actually here at this position. So uh, some definitions restrict that these missing nodes must be from the right side, not from the left side and without any gaps. So for example, if P is not there uh, and we have O and Q, the leaves are only on the last level but there is a kind of gap in, the, in between so we don't call it complete tree. Uh, the third type of tree, of binary trees, is just uh, neither full nor complete, so just a binary tree, a normal binary tree. It's not full tree because here we don't we don't have always uh, two uh, children for each node, and the leaves are not uh, can be, for example, node V here is a leaf, so it's not on the last level. Exercise. Um, you can see here a tree data structure. Uh, I need you to identify its type. Is it a complete tree, a full tree, or neither full nor complete tree, according to the explanation I just gave on the previous slide. Uh, to answer this question, you need to go to your account on Times website, and you will find a polling question asking you to choose the appropriate answer. There is 
also another question. The structure that you see here on the right, is it complete tree, middle form not complete, or not a 3D structure at all? So to give your answers, you need to post this video, go to time to come, and uh, choose the appropriate answer, and then come back and continue uh, this video. Move on to uh, discuss a special type of binary trees called binary search trees, or BSTs for short. Uh, binary search tree is like uh, a normal binary tree, but with some conditions on the values uh, of the nodes, or what we call uh, the node keys. So these values that are contained inside each node, there are some conditions. Uh, for example, the, if you look at any node, all the other nodes in its left subtree have values smaller than so, for example, here um, node 8 has two subtrees, left and right subtrees. So, everything here in the left subtree is actually smaller. Have, uh, the nodes have values smaller than 8. And everything on the right subtree have node values which are larger. subtree each must also be a binary search tree so uh, this applies to all the nodes not only the root if you take for example this node number six everything on its left which is only one node here is smaller than six and everything on its right is bigger than uh, six so the subtree which has six as a root is also a binary search tree any node you pick is by definition also uh, a binary search tree so we have a kind of recursive definition to define a binary search tree um, there must be all, also no duplicate nodes which means we cannot have two nodes with the same key value because whatever or wherever you position that value you are going to violate one of the conditions if you have redundant keys okay so now uh, what happens if i want to search for a particular node in this BST and this is actually uh, why it's called binary search tree because we want to use it in searching. It turns out that uh, we can perform uh, a search in a fast way without examining all the nodes of the tree. For example, what are the steps to follow in order to find um, the key or the node with the key value 14 in this given tree? First, we always start at the root of the tree and check if it's the value that you are looking for then we stop we have found the node is 8 equal to 14 the answer is no so we cannot stop we have to continue searching the tree but we have to decide there is a decision to be made first because the tree there has two subtrees left and right which one we are going to continue searching in? Is it the left one, the right one, or both? Because the value 14 is bigger than 8, at the root of the tree, we know that according to the structure and the properties of a BST, if node 14 is to be found, it must be in the right subtree of the root, not the left one. This gives us an advantage of skipping to search um, all the nodes in the left subtree which will reflect on the performance of the search so all these nodes I know 14 is not among them so no need to search at all if 14 to be, to be found it should be in this right half or right part of the uh, original tree so the decision is to go to the right subtree and repeating the search operation again and because it's a recursive uh, definition it starts again as a search for number uh, 14 and the subtree which has 10 as the root so is 10 equal to 14 the answer is again no and there is a decision to be made which is to go to the right subtree of node 10 to search for so we go to uh, search in the 
binary search tree again whose root is 14. Now, we, when we go to node 14, we will find the target node and stop our search here. So we follow a particular path, which we call a search path, in order to find our node, the target node, and um, it allows us to eliminate a lot of the uh, available nodes in the tree without searching them, and still being able to decide whether node 14 is there or not. Okay, let's see now how we can do uh, the same search for node number 7. So how do we go about that? We start again from the root. Is it, is it equal to 7? No. Is it bigger or smaller than 8? It's smaller than 8 so it should be towards this. Uh, is this 7? The answer is no. Do I go left or right? 7 is more than 3 so I go right. Is it equal to 6? No. Go left or right? I will go right. Is it equal to 7? The answer is yes, and I have found uh, the target value and the search path that I followed is this one here, not in red. Okay, now how about, how about finding node with value 5 in the tree? Let me just uh, delete these ones and let's try to start again. Um, I start from the root. Is uh, 8 equal to 5? The answer is no. I go left because 5 is less than 8. Is 3 equal to uh, 5? No. I go right. Is 6 equal to 5? No. I would go left. Is 4 equal to 5? No. And then I have to go right, isn't it? When I go right, there is no right subtree of 4. So uh, in this case, I have reached the, the bottom of and I couldn't find the value 5 at any of my uh, search trials so this is now safe to assume that 5 does not exist in the tree at all so we see that if a value does not exist in the tree uh, we will have to go through all the levels of the tree until reaching a leaf or a node which has no left child or no right child depending on the direction we are searching and only then we can assume that, uh, or that we can announce the value does not really exist in the, in the tree nodes. This case, as you can see, is considered the worst case scenario for searching a BST, searching for non existing uh, node key. Now, to speak about the time complexity of the searching method, we know that if the tree is complete or near complete, it will have. Um, a maximum height of log n, where n is the number of nodes it contains. So the maximum height for sorry, so the maximum height for this tree is going to be log n, log n base two of uh, where n is actually the number of nodes in this tree. That's only uh, if the tree is complete or near complete one. So we kind of have a kind of maybe a maximum uh, number of search trials before deciding that we have found or haven't found the key that you are looking for. In other words, the complexity is logarithmic because each time we are searching a node, we go and decide we have to go left or right to, if, if we do not find it. And each time we do that, we are cutting half of the remaining nodes in the tree. And cutting continuously cutting by half and half and half would lead to a logarithmic complexity. Of course, this is valid only when the tree is complete or near complete, because as we saw earlier, a tree data structure or this, how its shape can be taught really uh, in, in different ways can be skewed towards the right or left and thus the height of the number of levels can grow bigger and actually much more bigger than log, log n of base 2. So therefore we will learn in subsequent topics 
about techniques that allow us to maintain this balance of concrete trees. We would like to have always complete or near complete trees. You will learn about this when we study FEL trees. Okay, now let's see how we can insert new nodes into existing BSTs. So if you are given this uh, tree structure that you can see here, and you want to insert a new node with value with key value 5 into this BST, how do you do that? We start first by applying um, a search operation to find the value of the node that we want to insert. So I search for value 5 in the tree. If we really, how, how do we do that? So remember, we go level by level, moving right, right, left, right, until we can confirm whether it, it really exists or not. If we really find the value 5, then no insertion takes place, because remember, uh, duplicate keys are not allowed. So we either give error message, or update the node data, or inform the user, or whatever we want to do in the case of no insertion happening. If the value is not found, then we can insert the, the node at the end of the search path by linking it to its parent node as a left or right child. So node 5 should go towards the end of the search path and become a right child of node number 5. Number 4, sorry. And then we are done. So you can notice that uh, insertion always happens by making the new node a leaf that will be linked to a parent node in the, uh, which is existing in the tree. Of course, this is not necessarily at the last level of the tree, always. So insertion happens as a leaf added at the end of a search path, could be at the last level or could be an upper level. Exercise for you. Um, I want to insert a node with value 9 into this given tree. Where should it go? Now to answer this, you just hold the node number 9 with your mouse and drag it to one of these positions given in the tree. Now of course in order to do that, you cannot do it in this video, you have to pause the video and go to the times, you will find uh, an exercise asking you to uh, hold down the node number 9 and put it somewhere one of these available positions in the tree. Now when you go and do that on Dimes website, you will find another exercise which is this one. You need to insert all of these um, nodes into an empty, or at the beginning it's an empty binary search tree. So you start by inserting node number E first and then followed by B and followed by D and followed by C and so on. So you insert them one by one. You will find also another exercise uh, on times asking you to uh, put the final structure of the tree after inserting all the nodes. Of course, you are going to depend on uh, comparing the nodes, the values of the nodes, and we consider higher alphabet order to be a bigger value. So for example, um, node number E, bigger in value than node uh, with value B. So to answer this question, you just go and hold the nodes with your mouse and drag them to the appropriate position uh, given in the structure here. You are going to pause the video again and do that on Times website. Finally, try to insert the same nodes as we before into a binary research tree but following different order, now the order given to you is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So go with the alphabetical order. First is A, then B, then C, and so on. Now, um, I need you to uh, submit your observation that you find when you finish inserting all these notes. So I will not give you the correct data structure, just tell me what do you observe when you insert the, the given notes in the given order. Also you need to do that on times. In activity we have learned about 
about several topics. We saw uh, uh, binary trees data structure. We learned about binary search trees and how to perform searching in these trees and how to insert new nodes into existing uh, BSTs. In following classes, we will learn how to delete a node from a binary search tree and how to maintain the balance. We, we, we saw that if we have a tree that is complete or near complete, then searching can become fast. But how to maintain that kind of balance in whatever ordering we do or use when inserting new nodes or however we delete from a binary search tree, we still would like to maintain it as balanced as possible. So see you soon.